Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Rao, and I'm going to do a how-to here on how to polish glass when you've got uh, some older glass that has some scratches and haze in it, and what you need to do that. Now, this is not meant for full-on restoration with some serious tire burns or deep scratches or anything like that. But this is what I use for, you know, dusty old and uh, you know kits that could use a good polishing. But the glass is actually pretty usable. I have used this stuff in the past, Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Clear Plastic Polish. This stuff works really good, although it's pretty hard to find nowadays. Um, and I've had this a long time. I actually stumbled upon it again, um, but I have used it. But what I'm using a lot more now is this stuff right here. Uh, something I picked up at Walmart, and uh, it's Scratch and Swirl Remover. And it talks about uh, uh, what it has in it. But the, the big trick with these is, Look for something that doesn't have silica in it. So no silicone or silica, um, which that's a bit of an abrasive and it does a pretty good job polishing. The problem with that stuff, if it has that in there, is it doesn't uh, help paint stick. So it leaves a, a film behind. So if you're going to paint, it's not really good for that. Um, and then microfiber towels. Uh, this is another brand new one that uh, I, I cut them into smaller sections here and then soak them. But I use this for the actual polishing and, of course, some water. So I got to get that in there to soak for a little bit. And, you know, of course, here's uh, uh, many pieces of glass. Another thing I got here is a regular paper towel. Not paper towel, but face cloth to help dry it off. So while that soaks in there for a second. And I've got a couple here that I need for a specific project. My 68 Corvette here. Um, I got all the glass for that. So that's this piece right here. Uh, you can see it's got some real fine scratches in it. If I can get the, there you can see. And uh, of course it's two different back windows because it has two tops. So there's one and there's the other, but these are very, very light, but they're visible. So um, I'm gonna leave them, uh, I'm not gonna leave them as is. I'll polish those up a little bit, but that, you get that from kits that are this old. This is from this kit from 1988. So 35 year old kit. And then another one recently in my stash has picked up a few of these. And uh, same thing, you know, that kit's from 87. And here's the windshield that was in the kit right there. So it's got a number of uh, scuff marks all over from bouncing around in the box. But the trick here is you know, running my finger over and everything. I really don't feel them. So really nothing there um, that I can feel. So I know they're not deep scratches. But you got to be careful with some of these, and this has the back window for it as well. Uh, same kind of thing, so I could polish that up and uh, remove those very fine scratches. But it really doesn't take much. And I've got some older ones here from some miscellaneous um, kits or spares. And you can see there's a, like, looks like a super glue fingerprint there or some sort of fingerprint there. But uh, we'll see about getting that off. But this has some glue marks and everything in it. And, uh, Rear window from, uh, uh, I actually recognize this, one of the 69 Roadrunners, uh, Johan kits. But it was glued in pretty good there. But the actual window is in a good spot. And it's got a decal there, so I'm kind of curious. Um, showed this one, another one that's just been around for a while. And this one's got a pretty good mark on it. But, you know, none of these are really serious. So, but a couple of things. Let's get this out, wring out most of the water here. So that it's damp, but it's not dripping wet. So, so here we are. And then uh, shake this, of course. Now, when you do this, you only need like a tiny little dot of it. Like that. And be very careful on how hard you push on this. Especially a windshield like this. Because if you push on it and it starts flexing, it develops stress cracks in it. And uh, those become more visible too. So a lot of careful polishing and rubbing the two together. And then you can kind of see what's going on there. So just uh, being very gentle. And the outside of the window is actually easier than doing the inside. But this one's really not too bad. So now I'll just turn it around and do the inside and just kind of use my hands and pushing them together. But not, not pushing real hard, but just enough where you can feel it working and see if it's working and go back and forth and 
you just go over it a couple of times, but keep checking your work to see where you're at. So there we are. Let's uh, get this. So you see, took a lot of the light ones out, but there's still some of the heavier ones in there. So definitely gonna need some more effort in that. That one's definitely got some deeper ones there. All right, let's get some more on there. and realize which side it's on. Okay, you can see it's starting to flex a little too much and starting to create the little flexing in it, which I've had this problem with the glass from this era and really flat glass like this doing this. So this isn't working out the way I would like it to. So I'll just move on to one of the other ones here because this one not coming out the way I would like it to. That's what I was talking about, being real careful, trying not to flex the glass. 
So yeah, you can see it right there where just flexed it a little too much and you can see that happen. So, and sometimes it's better just to lay it down on a flat surface and just go across like this. The only reason I'm really not doing that right now is because it shakes the camera and the table. That really cleaned up the back window. Cleaned up really nicely. This is the other back window, nice flat. You can kind of see a few really light scratches there. So that should come out really nice. Of course, having a, a flat one and doing it uh, like this makes it real easy. Still see some of them, but they're very, very minor. All right. This one's a bit thicker. That's one of the thinnest ones that flexes really easily. Um, and I've had that problem with some of those other kits of that same type. Most of this is just trying to clean it up to where it's better and shines a little bit better. May not be perfect, but it was better than it was. That's what my goal is. Not always trying to make it absolutely perfect, but uh, just trying to make it better. So we got some sort of blemish right in there. But it actually looks like it's in the glass because it's not in the shine, but you can see it. That's kind of weird. It's actually in it. Hmm. 
Let's see uh, some of this really old glass. See what happens to that decal, if anything. We'll just stay to one side of it. Because sometimes on these vintage rebuilders, it's just a lot of dirt on it. And this will just clean it up real, real nice. Let's do the opposite side. You see the side I didn't do, even though it got wiped down a little bit in the side I did do. Just cleaning the dirt off of it, making it a little bit more shiny. Didn't put a whole lot of effort into this one, but still makes a big difference. Surprised it didn't affect the decal. Was kind of wondering if it would or not. Going right over the decal. Surprisingly, that thing's on there, too. That came out interesting. Let's see about this one. Well, which side is that on? Looks like that's on the outside. Let's get a little bit more water on that. This will actually build up in this too, so I'll use these a, a number of times and then I'll just get another one. I'm putting a little bit of pressure on here, but not a whole lot. Just mainly working kind of fast. Sometimes just taking your time and going slow um, will, help, will help quite a bit too. That spot is still just a hair there, but it's a lot better. A lot better. And I'm just concentrating on that one spot on purpose just to see if I can Get that area a little bit better. You see a dry kind of a haze. Yeah, I don't see that spot any, at all. Let's see, what's this from? 74 Roadrunner, so MPC glass, but I think this is from a much more recent 
release. All right. Let's see about that one with the fingerprint on the inside. These can be tricky with the vent windows, really getting in the vent window area right here with the thumb. And try not to get too aggressive with it. You know, you kind of get impatient and want to push harder. Um, but I've actually cracked windows doing that too. And as hard as some of these can be to replace, that can be no fun. Especially when you got a 70s rebuilder or something very rare, but then you can use it to vacuum form a glass, which I've never really tried. And I don't have a vacuum former, but something I've wanted to do. I don't see the fingerprint at all. There's a glue mark on that side. And I didn't polish on any at all on the outside, just the inside. Just to see if... Uh, would change anything. It's amazing how much a couple of minutes and a little bit of extra effort can really clean up some of this glass. Maybe not 100% perfect, but I cleaned that up quite a bit. I'm not even sure what kit this is from. This was just from my stockpile of glass, but uh, she cleaned up pretty nice. So I'm pretty happy with most of it other than this windshield, but I've had that problem with uh, these more modern, thinner um, ones like this, where it'll do that. And, you know, that's really not as noticeable, especially when this one's gonna have a black interior. And, uh, but I still gotta do something a little bit about that. But uh, I've got a few of these, so I may just uh, get another windshield out of another one and see if it polishes out better than this one. But she's still usable, maybe not, uh, you know, a show quality build windshield, but still better, but yeah. It's the only one I really had an issue with tonight, but I've been doing this a while. I gotta do the rear window too, but uh, I'll finish that up here, but just uh, showing you, you know, cleaning it up and polishing them up a little bit. And, you know, especially when you got a vintage kits, so it really helps quite a bit and uh, may not make them perfect, but makes them a lot better. And, you know, with the, uh, the polish on it and getting any of the dust and dirt and fingerprints off of it uh, really helps and really makes it shine in the photos and everything. So while they look really good in my photos and video, um, it's a lot better than, than that. You know, you try that with glass cleaner, but uh, you know, it'll make that look even better as well. And I got a couple other things I want to try as well, but so now I'm ready to glue the windows in that and keep moving on with that build, but uh, I had to polish some windows and see how that worked and i've been asked a while so i figured i'd take this time do this for you and show you so thank you for tuning in subscribing i really do appreciate it especially if you enjoy this content definitely hit subscribe and uh, you guys you have a wonderful weekend and i will see you next saturday